Let's talk to Justin Urquhart Stewart. He's the co-founder and head of corporate development at Seven Investment Management. Very good morning to good you, morning. Justin. Good morning. Okay, I want to read something to you. The earnings season has commenced several beats, but market focus is elsewhere on interest rate hikes from the Fed and the deteriorating trade relations with China. Selling is now feeding on itself with sellers responding to lower prices by offloading more stocks. You can't argue with the tape said Jesse Livermore famously. When fear moves the herd, logic and reason are the first casualties. If you were marking that piece of homework, what would you say? Um, I'd like to, it's a rather confused argument, but uh, I'd like to see what the clear line of argument is going to be other than sort of a, a paragraph of uh, nervousness. What do I learn at the end of it? I learn that the writer is worried. Uh, I disagree with the very first line, with the corporate earnings. Um, not looking at those. I am looking at the corporate earnings, particularly the margins. That's the crucial issue. Show me the American margins. Are they now looking at uh, being squeezed or looking as though the next stage is going to be squeezed? Because that's what the market's really going to take notice of. We conflate all the political issues, which are important, behaviour of Trump, trade issues, all of those, into market news as well. And actually what you have to do is separate an awful lot of that up. What's going to move that share price? The answer is how that company is doing. But yes, of course, there's a backdrop issue to it. And what you're seeing at the moment is people looking at various company results. There's some pretty good beats on their expectations. Others actually saying, yeah, but that's about as good as this gets. I've now priced this full of, I don't think this goes much further. Now we'd add in the interest rates, add in the geopolitical issues of trade wars and things like yep. that, and you've got other elements to support it. But I come back to the corporate figures to start with. Okay, so you said off air that you went into cash recently for personal reasons, uh -huh. okay? Could you feel, in terms of the market, being in the ninth innings and right for some sort of correction? Several times this year. Earlier in the summer, I wanted a higher proportion of cash, which is what I would normally do anyway, because I'd expect some volatility. I could use that. Uh, then about four weeks ago, I just disliked it even more, and I want to try and buy a house. That happens to coincide with it, but I thought, no, no, it's more than that. Actually, I'm just going to go nearly all into cash with this at the moment, which goes against all my long-term principles, because yep. I'm a great believer in compounding and things like that. Yep. But I just didn't like this, the background noise. But again, I was being fed the background political noise as opposed to looking at the companies. What really uh, pushed me, though, was actually looking at some of those company results saying, that's as good as it gets, and we're not sure that's going to take it much further. Right. So Morgan Stanley wrote a report recently saying that historically the FTSE is very, very cheap, okay, mm. at 7,000. The chartists, the man, the guys who are drawing lines, I see there's a sort of downside target now of anywhere between 6,000 and 6,400. Would that be an opportunity of a lifetime? I think it would be a great opportunity. Bear in mind, we're coming to the end of this era. We say the ninth innings. We, just, we really can't measure it. Of course, joy of hindsight in two years' time, everyone will know yep. it. But it's, it's tired. It's ending. So therefore, actually, there's going to be some value coming through. Have patience, have some cash, and it will eventually come here. Um, uh, my longer-term view would always be you keep yourself primarily invested for your compounding. But I do see this as an, a time now where the markets are tired, the stories are, are, are not pleasant, um, and particularly in terms of trade, if you have trade wars, it knocks the amount of business going through on the global GDP. Yep. That actually is crucial to actually what's going on. And the Chinese are making noises now. We will trade elsewhere. We will find other ways of doing it. Just listen to Jack Ma at Alibaba. And history shows us if you bring in trade barriers or increase them, markets just go round it. They don't always return to where they were. Right. Let's wrap up with Brexit. Obviously, Theresa May under huge pressure, pressure from all angles. What's your, what you, what's your take on it? I was in Brussels last week, mm. and the, the feedback I had was that generally there's not going to be a Brexit deal. Uh, it, I, I, I weep because it's, this is such a waste at the moment. Whether you're for it or against it, for heaven's sake, be clear and get on with it. Sad trouble is at the moment we have such an appalling set of, le set of, set of leaders mm. and potential leaders of what a political colour. I can't see any of them. And no one who's actually going to be leading the country effectively. I very, feel very sorry for the Prime Minister because she's nailed to the mast almost at yep. the moment because no one's going to take that wretched job off her for the time being. However, uh, it worries me uh, because you know there are basic fundamental elements when you talk to business people doing business. If we haven't got a deal, it makes life much more difficult. I don't know whether lorries are going to stack up. I don't know whether just-in-time issues are going to be really affected. I'm, I, I can't see that. But there are more issues there which make me worried 
to demand that our leaders actually do something clearly. Um, and what's that got to be? Well, actually, it's got to go to Parliament. Parliament has to make a clear decision. And MPs ought to find actually the strength of character to actually not just be swayed by populist attitudes and those who shout loudest, yep. but actually what's best for the nation. Right. Because the, the headline that strikes me is extraordinary is we're 95% there. Okay. <laughs> what on earth does that actually mean? Oh, it's wonderful. That's like for, it's, it, you know, it's just like going on, on a tube in, in, in London, isn't it? I'm 95% away to the office. That's good. You're still nowhere near the office, though. Right. You haven't got there. The last 5% happens to be the most difficult yep. bit. And the most difficult bit, as you heard most of the commentators saying, is actually what's going to happen with Ireland. I feel very sorry for the Republic of Ireland, because they're at the other end of this, and they suffer greatly with what Britain does. And, you know, so whatever deal they have, with, they've got to try and reorganise their trade accordingly. And they're not a big e economy. Um, and we've done very little. We, in our rather slightly, pretty, slightly very patronising British way, we tend to sort of almost ignore Ireland. And most people on the British mainland don't really understand Northern Ireland anyway. Yep. And they almost wish they wish it really rather go away. It's part of the United Kingdom. Yep. It doesn't go away. We have to solve it. And finally, to wrap up, give me one sector between now and Christmas that you think would could perform, would perform, maybe a beta. I think that actually there's going to be something in back in the emerging markets. Nobody wants to go near emerging markets at the moment. Um, and all the reasons, whether it's actually with the, the, what's happened with the dollar and things like that, they suffer the worst whiplash. Yep. But now on Christmas, that whiplash may well get worse. And so there are going to be some good quality assets to pick up. Um, what, where would I look for for that? Quality areas in, in Malaysia and Singapore. Um, even, dare I say, no one's touching China at the moment. And one of the longer term interesting plays, I think, in China is the Chinese uh, high tech businesses. Um, those areas, which, of course, they've driven wonderfully in the States. The longer term growth opportunity for those tech businesses within China is stupendous. And so if you can pick those up for a, a few pence, then that's a good long term one. On that note, Justin, thank you very much. Thank you.